Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I did actually just stay on, you know, kind of. I think I think I disconnected about quarter to nine. <laughs> so <laughs> just in the background. No, I, I think um, um, Luca, Luca sent in um, text messages. I think on the Facebook, there is no crypto hour, and then it's like a parental responsibility for us. That's why no crypto hour today. Uh, ah, so no, I couldn't I find the link um, oh. on the video this morning. Oh, I didn't know. Normal, oh. Normally, I get notification. Mm. I wasn't on his um, Facebook. No. I did, yeah, no, no he, he sent the text message on Facebook. I think it's the last night. Okay. Oh, right. Okay. I'll have to get in touch. Is that his personal yeah, that's, page, Jaya? It's in Facebook. Yeah, no, his personal hour. Page. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, think, I'm, I don't think I'm actually. Hour or something. Yeah, that's oh. why. I thought that everyone knew that. That's why I didn't say it to anyone. Mm. No, I don't think I'm actually connected with Luca. I don't, I don't know. It must be, but um, I, I don't. I turn all notifications off because I don't like being um, distracted. So, yeah. Yeah. Facebook is too much of a, a scroll mm. rest for me. I end up in there for just touch it, and it sucks you in like a black hole, and you end up scrolling <laughs> for ages looking at. It. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I try to avoid it whenever I can. I, going just when I hear there's a message for me that's about it mm. uh, yeah well there is a in fact there was one thing I wanted to pick up on it's um exciting news that I knew no would have come up in Lucas hour which is um the UK have passed um consent for regulation of the crypto industry oh, that's yeah. so that's I really good that. news yeah uh, screen two. Yeah. So that means that we'll have. Oh, I got there. That means we'll end up with um, proper rules that we can follow, unlike the US. And the fact that it's happening um, already means that we're in a much better chance of actually raising some good, reputable digital currency based firms. Um, without coming under the oppression that the UK, the UK, poor UK, US crypto industry is having at the moment. I've not heard any, Jonathan, I've not heard anything about um, any ETFs coming out of the UK. Is that is that one of those things that might be likely? I'm sure, yeah, now that it's been, um, uh, so now we've got some regulations to work to for um, actual complying with law around cryptocurrencies. Um, I'm sure we'll start seeing Bitcoin ETFs based from the based out based out of the UK kicking off fairly quickly. I mean that the US are so uh, what's the word two faced <laughs> because on one hand they're raising cases against Coinbase and Binance, two largest um, exchanges in the US. I don't know, Kraken's crack, probably up there as well. And then on the other, they're issuing Bitcoin ETFs to BlackRock. So it just shows who they're beholden to at the moment, really. Yeah. Uh, whereas at least in the UK, we're smaller. I don't know if we're less corrupt, but <laughs> the, the thing <laughs> we've I given found, a buying uh, chance, which is good. Yeah, what I found what most um, interesting was that um, uh, US regulators were saying uh, no to Bitcoin ETF, but they were actually approving uh, leverage ETF. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so which one's a lot more uh, riskier? Is it leverage yeah, exactly. or non-leveraged? <laughs> <laughs> like we'll let you sell you the risky end of our uh, ETF portfolio, make it uber risky, put your money at risk, which is our job to prevent you from risk. Uh, and then on the other hand, they won't let you use DeFi. So crazy, crazy time. But um, I can't actually find the news post I was looking for. But it is, uh, they're all out there. You can find the one that suits you. Um, suits you best. I never read. And Luca will pick up on it next week, I'm, I'm sure. But I did have a whole load of stuff going on that I wanted to show you um, in and around the crypto, Cardano crypto space. So going right back to our... Um, Probably the first project we talked about in these crypto 
uh, calls, these Cardano calls, was meld. And I don't know how many of you participated in the meld ISPO. Um, I didn't. How... Yeah. No. Okay. No. Uh, anybody? No. Okay. Because I, I did. You have the meld. You said that uh, Jonathan, but yeah, we haven't bought meld. I think. Okay. So meld was the first one to do a a large scale ISPO on Cardano. So they really sort of heard rumors about this new model of fundraising and actually implemented it as the first ones. And um, I got in and they now are offering, um, I mean, that finished 18 months ago or something, but they're now offering uh, the bank manager NFT. Meld is a large uh, uh, platform that raised a whole load of money from the, that Cardano ISPO and they've used it to build out some Cardano tech, but also, um, their intention is to be multi-chain. So they've got um, utility from uh, Cardano that is going to be merged with utility from Avalanche and a whole load of other chains. So their, their initial token launch, which you earned through the ISPO, is now um, being replaced by a uh, another token, which is also meld, but it is uh, upgraded to be able to work with uh, their cross-chain platform, which they've built out. Um, also, as part of that deal of being part of their original NFT, you can go and claim a bank manager NFT. Um, so I was curious to know if anybody here has. I think Luca had, so I'll, I'll make sure that he gets this, or someone um, helps me make sure Luca gets this. He can go and pick up his, his meld NFT for three ADA. You just need to just need to attach your wallet that you participated in the ISPO um, originally. And then you'll be able to claim your bank manager NFT, which has some utility that will be used on their blending platform to increase your yield or decrease your interest if you take out a loan with them. Um, their uh, NFT will cost people who participated uh, three ADA, which means um, that it's uh, effectively the, the transaction fee plus a, a small platform fee. Um, but their the utility you can get out of that potentially down the road will be will certainly um, return that to you. Or um, you could actually just go and sell that straight away um, because there's already a marketplace for these NFTs, which uh, is showing a floor price for that NFT range of 195 ADA. So effectively, if you're capable of getting this, you can get it for three ADA and sell it on for 195, which is a pretty good rate of return for, uh, for um, a nice little freebie. Now, if you are interested in the meld platform, you can participate still by entering into uh, the meld raffle. So if you did want to try your luck at getting hold of an NFT bank manager, um, a bank manager NFT, then you can enter it from the uh, freeloaders of the guys who built out the smart claims platform. Um, I'm a member of their DAO and um, they, have the freeloaders token but one of the things one of the big projects they took on as well was performing the nft uh, platform and uh, release for the meld bank manager tokens and there's something like forty five thousand of these nf of them um, people part participating in the ispo um, so it was a huge undertaking with a lot of um data storage needed uh, and but it's gone it's gone flawlessly as far as um i've been as I've seen. Uh, so in addition to that platform they built out, they built out this raffle. So anybody can now participate in this if you want to try your luck at getting hold of one of the uh, bank manager NFTs or potentially one of the gold bank manager NFTs. Um, the gold NFT will actually get you an additional percent interest or additional percent discount on your on your loan or um, uh, more borrowing and, and the... Uh, the uh, returns on that or the, the secondary market sale price for that hasn't been revealed yet but i'm sure it will be you know a magnitude above the 195 ada so for uh, a 25 ada punt you can enter the raffle um, and i think there's something like uh, 1195 places in the raffle um so you've got reasonable odds 
Um, there's going to be five bank manager FTs and one gold, I think, given out. Um, but if you wanted to try a punt, got a bit of gambling money to spend, then you can perhaps enter this raffle. Uh, and and then you can end up with a gloriously ugly bank manager NFT in your wallet. <laughs> uh, so here's the, the current floor price, 190 ADA. Um, there are 3,000 in, in listed already. You know, and still some to be minted. So this is the URL for reading up about the utility. This is what the gold bank manager NFT looks like. And uh, uh, I'll drop these links into the Discord server so you can go and pick them up and have a look if you're interested. Uh, the uh, the other thing that Meld uh, released as part of their SPO was, um, depending on how long you participated in it, you got a free NFT as well. So uh, the Diamond Hand NFT is this one. Um, so if you have taken part in um, in the Meld SPO, then go and grab your your uh your nft if you're eligible for one and this nft is is also valuable uh i've got a link to the jpeg store listing yes so this one is now sitting at a floor price of 896 ada um so again just for participating by putting some of your ada into the meld pools by relinquishing your ada rewards and um, they're now sort of pay you back by um, giving you the MEL token, which has some value and is, is rising all the time, and also distributing some NFTs to those who participated. Uh, their raise was huge, though, so they made a lot of money out of the Cardano community. Um, and some people are sort of feeling that they're, they're doing too much on other chains and would like to see more activity in um, Cardano land. I think that unless we have both, there's really not much point in, in any ecosystem existing. We need to interoperability for, for DeFi to win all in all. So um, I certainly don't mind them engaging, but this is a good way of, of getting involved. So their, their app is out as well. Um, so you can now uh, attach, actually, I don't think I've got the correct wallet set up on, uh, on this operating system. But you can go and create a wallet on the Meld app. Uh, they did initially start out with relying on single sign-on platforms, so you could you had to create a Google, you know, have a Google account or an Amazon or an Apple account to um, use their wallet. Now they've actually given you um, a more of a standard, self-sovereign um, means of interacting with their app. So you can go and create a, a wallet, and then you'll get to see their um, lending borrowing platform and take part their tool set will grow over time they've got a whole load of exciting ideas um for what they're going to be building out you can just go to mel.com to see what's on the roadmap and uh one of the interesting things that i look to look talks about as well on crypto was they have a, an idea for a, a self-paying back loan so you can you can go and take a loan and um, that loan will be used to be invested in, in current cryptocurrencies and the yield on that will then pay down your premiums on your loan. So effectively, um, their idea is that you'll be able to have uh, money for free, which is, <laughs> which is an interesting approach. Um, and certainly, you know, an indicator of the sort of mind-bending um, alterations to finance that are actually possible if you have a, a level, play, level playing field for wealth generation, for value generation in um, in the hands of the people rather than in the hands of the uh, the banks and the financial industry. Um, so Melda worth, worth a look and certainly are trying to uh, pay back uh, and engage uh, all different communities um, where they can. So inside the new app, uh, sorry, sorry. The other thing to mention was that there, if you do need to transform your old, um, lost the link now, transform your old tokens to the new, then you will, you can, um, once you've created uh, a wallet in this, uh, you should have the, uh, you should be able to attach then your, 
um, your original ISPO wallet, which will have your old tokens in. Um, those tokens will appear with a gray icon. Uh, attach them to this, this meld app. And then you'll get the option to upgrade them to the new token. New token has um, same policy ID, but will be uh, actually cross-chain compatible. So you can exchange that token then, uh, which you've earned through the ISPO with uh, other tokens on other chains or within Cardano as well, all from within this app. So that's uh, um, something that will need to be done within the next year or so. The old token will cease to have any any function, they're not um, going to be using it any further. So the token you actually earned um, is upgrade, upgradable for free. But if you don't do that, then your token will lose its value eventually. Um, so worth doing. Uh, and uh, once I come back on another session, I'll get my wallet attached and go through the upgrade process so you can follow it from here. Cool. Uh, any questions? Anything? Anybody got anything burning that they want to ask about or or work on? As I, so, uh, what's what's the deadline if you wanted to involve in a lot of those uh, NFT that raffle? Uh, the raffle is open for um, uh, another week or so, I think. Has it got the um. Okay, I will, I will um, explore as well. I think Luca also was saying when uh, asked about to buy some mail, but the we got like we lost the chance at that time, so right. we'll buy our lock this time. Maybe time to buy okay. some raffle. Yeah, thank you, Jonathan. Uh, yeah, you yeah, could. I, yeah. Uh, Jonathan, I just got a general question about uh, floor prices for NFTs. Then. Uh, mm they determined is you can just like list it at any price you like or um how do they how does that work so the, the floor price is determined by as the the cheapest price that an nft has sold for so the nft must have, have changed hands at a certain price and that then sets the floor price so right. the, um, yeah the value is determined from the market rather than yes. from um, the lister uh yeah. And so you can see then the the trading price um, history over time of these NFTs. So it has dropped down as low as 150 on this time range. Um, but yeah, it has been up as high as so the average sale price is 321. The minimum sale price is 160, uh, as low as 150. Yes. And then the current floor price is 190. So that's that's the price that. Um, the cheapest NFT, NFT is listed for. Yes. Okay. And are you able then, you know, kind of to set a limit price, if you like, you know, sort of like to purchase an NFT? Um, this marketplace, uh, I um, it doesn't have a, a limit price, but it does yeah. have an offer price. So an offer, yes. That's a, yes. Oh, okay. So you can say, right, you know, I'm, I'm willing to offer this. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So find something you like you can go in give an offer and if the the vendor decides that yeah i'll take that money mm -hmm. um, then you've got a deal on your hands right and, okay and of course it's all in the DeFi space so um your exchange of goods is actually in um in smart contracts not within the hands of the platform managers or in the other party until both parties have agreed on the exchange yes. so it's um it's a good um safe way of exchanging you know, carrying out peer-to-peer -peer exchange of of items mm. um, so that and that's one thing that i you know i do think about more and more um especially um guys in iaw if you're you're looking at um opportunities um a lot of them will come up as um centralized entity opportunities masquerading as DeFi. And you, so you do have to think about that when you're entering and getting involved. If you have a, a website that you, you register for um, and they create your wallet, you never get given your pri um, private keys. You just have a password. Then you are you are dealing with a, a centralized um, platform, not a decentralized one. Mm -hmm. And that difference is subtle but important because if you own the private keys for that wallet, then you're the only person that can um, remove items, assets from that wallet. If you never receive the private keys, then the platform holds them and they 
they ultimately control your your funds, your assets. Um, and uh, if there is a uh, a problem with the platform, a crash of the uh, markets, then they will keep your funds rather than you having control and, and say what happens to them. So this is exactly the same situ situation as we've seen with FTX and um, and these other large centralized platforms. If, if they run into trouble, then all their members suffer um, and the whole market can be shaken by it. In DeFi, that doesn't happen because every individual is self-sovereign is king of their own uh, kingdom and holder of their own assets and they can't be taken from them without you signing off on on that exchange so do think about that when you're when you're interacting with any platform when you're signing up to uh, a new offer um that's offering a high rate of return think about okay how much of my portfolio is tied up in uh in centralized offers as opposed to decentralized ones and um, you know, I I much prefer to have me being responsible for um, the tokens, the assets, and you know you can't control the price of the assets, underlying assets, um, because that is market driven. Um, and still, if the project fails, then the, the token price will drop as well. But at least you are retaining control all of those assets. And in the in the case of a, a collapse, it might be that you can sell them on in second market, whereas if they're actually in the hands of the the entity that's controlling them they will they will um you know keep the assets for themselves try and recoup their costs or or let it go to zero uh, and the same is true of you know even these large entities like um um binance and uh and coinbase if you don't have the private keys if you're not using their DeFi wallet offerings then you are trusting them with your assets sorry Archie. Mm -hmm. No, no, thanks for that, Jonathan. That's a good reminder. So with uh, I've got, uh, for example, um, Coinbase wallet. So that wouldn't is that decentralized or not? Um... So I don't um, I don't actually have a Coinbase uh, wallet myself. And um, unless you created a seed phrase as you were. I, I did. You did. I did. Yeah. Then it may be that you got a DeFi wallet, um, most likely. Uh, um, but for example, with Binance, when I signed up, signed up with Binance, um, I did my full KYC. I have a username and password, um, and then they they have my exchange and my 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 spot wallet that I can do trades on. But to actually take sovereign self sovereignty of those assets, I need to move them into a separate DeFi wallet, which has a, which has a um, a seed phrase attached. Mm. Um, so yeah, just try and figure out from what the platform's information is it'll be in the fact frequently asked questions or something exactly yeah. what, the, what the deal is but yeah yeah it's always something to look for and and be aware of so especially um um you know i won't i won't mention names as this is being recorded but you know, any offering that's coming up um if you don't if, it, if you're not dealing straight away with the seed phrase and um and then the chances are you're dealing just with a, uh, an old Web2 platform when you're putting money into it, um, even if it is sending it to a crypto address, which it, it you know often is nowadays, you're still effectively dealing with somebody else's platform. They control it, um, not you. Yeah. Uh, whereas, you know, DeFi really looks like, um, looks like, uh, these sort of applications if they've got dap connectors if they've got um if you're using uh metamask or um eternal wallet depending on chain that you're operating with exodus wallet you know these these are decentralized wallets i mean even the exodus wallet is a password based wallet so you're starting off um with the keys actually being generated by the exodus platform itself um, you are able to download the keys, but um, that very fact that you you start off password and, and then they release the seed phrase to you, um, you know, just means that it's not it's it's not really you're not really self-sovereign. So even with an Exodus wallet, you know, they're they're an impeccable record. We'll never we'll never touch funds. I'm very confident in that. But um, they they issued you your seed phrase rather than it being generated out of um, a blockchain protocol itself. 
So they that's how they're able to give you that that nice user interface with um, multiple chains, multiple assets, um, and you'd just be able to to open it up with your password. Um, um, but yeah, ultimately they they issued you your seed phrase so they could in theory have a copy of it um that we would let a malicious employee spend it for example or or steal from you uh, i'm sure they've got standards set that that's impossible for any employees and so and so forth but you know actual um starting up a wallet purely from from software that's running on your machine without an internet connection that's how you can guarantee you've got um self-sovereignty using a hardware device um, where the seed phrase never leaves the device is created on the device that's how you ensure self-sovereignty um, but yeah it is it is a subtle thing that you'll you'll learn and get a feel from over time <laughs> no that's great thank you yeah uh so uh that was a question about uh floor prices and before that i think i covered anything all the questions is there any any others on any of that No, that's correct, Jonathan. Oh, I'll jump back to the next thing on my list. So the um that covers off meld nicely. Um and introduces uh, JPEG store is a is a really good tool. They kind of won the battle in the NFT space on Cardano. There are other other more mature stores, but um these guys are slickest and, and have attracted the most um uh um total value locked in their platform um, so they're doing really well there there is a um a new um a charter project that's um actually i've got it open already that's it's called balance and they're releasing um graphics on on various useful things and this one I thought was very interesting. So this is a visualization on the decentralization of uh, the blockchain. So this is a, a, a visual uh, representation of um, how, how distributed control over the network is. Um, so you can you can alter this this graphic by state, by pledge, by pools, by delegators. And each of those tells you something slightly different. So this is a bit like, we were looking at for the ADA stat poll um, in state pool distribution. But this one is looking purely at how distributed and decentralized the actual operators on the network are. So this first largest group is a single pool operators. So um, fluid pool, we are in this, this segment. So we are forming 25% uh, of, the, of the network um by stake. So this is ADA, ADA being distributed, ADA staked with entities. Um, twenty five percent of them are with single pool operators. Um, now, ideally, we'd have a larger, a larger portion of that as state single state pool operators because that's that's the the purest way of ensuring that we are um, uh, secure from manipulation, from uh, um, uh, coercion um, as a network. A single pool operator. To track down each one of these is going to be a, an awfully big job for any anybody that's looking to control the network. Um, however, this this metric changes as we move on and, and look around it. So, next biggest operator is Coinbase. So they've they've spun up a whole load of stake pools, um, badly I must say, and and they're running them for their offering. So if you stake your ADA in Coinbase, which is probably going to be, be wound up soon then it will be held in one of these these state pools um, and and all their pools like they've got um you know eight and a half percent of the state ada in the world is controlled by by uh, coinbase which is one private entity so if if a uh, a government was going after cardano to try and control them then they they could quite i mean coinbase is based in the us so you know they've already under they've got one one entity controlling eight percent of the network um within their reach already so you know they they can go after the biggest players if they're in their jurisdiction then they can they can create an impact um well this is you know we trust our governments to an extent um but uh 
you know, if there's uh, a, uh, you know, a 51% attack you've probably heard of is when um, just 51% of the, of the assets within a chain is controlled by a single entity, they, they can sway the network significantly they can um, cause real disruption in the in the um, operation of the chain and effectively uh, monopolize it take all the all the earnings from it um, for themselves and so we want to avoid any kind of centralization of the blockchain and and this is where cardano is really strong but even within cardano we have um you know this sort of of level of centralization already so our, our largest entity is one coinbase um Next up, we've got Binance. They're controlling another 4%. So suddenly that's um, uh, 12% or actually that's eight and a half each. So it's actually 13% of the network in just two entities. Um, Ada Lights, they, I think they're a, a wallet offering um, and they offer a staking platform within that. Um, so it, again, this is then getting smaller entities, but still you don't have to look too far down that list to control these guys to then have you know, a significant chunk of the market controlled. Um, fortunately, they, you know, you do really need 50%, 51% of the of the stake to be able to, to do anything um, significant um, in terms of an attack. But uh, you can see the, the leanings. And what will be interesting to go on and do as part of your own research is to look at other chains um, that are up and running that uh, you think are decentralized or proper DeFi but might be actually susceptible to attack to a far greater degree than um, than you would initially hold, or certainly that the um, that the press reveals. Um, and a lot of that comes down to um, venture capital money flowing in, owning a whole load of the tokens initially, um, and you know, making the chain vulnerable to, to attack. So in the case of Cardano, which again sort of, undermines any chance of the SEC actually coming after Cardano um with a with a and succeeding with a with a law case is that their the initial token release was was so distributed um um to entities in the in the east so a lot of Japanese uh there are a lot of Japanese whales who control um in decent chunk of data and the original team hold very little proportion in comparison to to the other chains. So even in the case of um, um, you know, Ethereum and and um, these guys, Cardano is doing really well. But uh, yeah, there's still as always we always need to go for the best, keep improving, keep improving. So so then we start to get down into the sort of the 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 good actors, small entities. So IOG themselves, they control one percent. Um, but the further down you go, you start to hit on to actual state pool operators. So these are the the oldest operators in the network. Um, Blue, Big Pay is a YouTuber. Um, Ocean uh, Westberg, I think, is is Andrew Westberg. Yeah, he runs Blue Cheese Steakhouse. So um, he's running multiple pools and has attracted a, a decent amount of um, delegation to his pools. Um, and so we don't want uh, these community guys, these good actors, uh, to get too large. Um, which is then how you know where we it's important to control the parameters and keep them spreading this stake out amongst them um, these small pool operators and ideally we want um, everybody as many people as possible to end up in this single stake pool operator thing that's that's how we ensure uh, the most amorphous cloud of humanity to control the network making it impossible to to damage um those proportions do change when you look at pledge. So uh, the pledge is what a state pool operator will put into the pool themselves. Um, it shows that they've got their their holdings invested into their own state pool. Um, and that, uh, that then gives them, should give them some kind of larger voice in terms of the network in, uh, in lots of people's opinions, including my own. Um, but it's obviously, the larger the pledge requirements are, the harder it is for uh, good operators in poorer countries to to really take part. So we don't want it to be a, a, a huge overriding factor because if we eliminate um, the poor countries in the world, then we just pool all the money and all the wealth and all the um, resources in the rich countries, which again doesn't help us in terms of decentralization, creating a new financial layer for humanity. Uh, so by pledge, IOG have a whole load of pledge in their pools. Um, 
then you've got new girl single pool operators again it's 25 percent of the network they're controlling the pledge and then we've got wave uh, which is a a large sort of venture capital backed um um fund uh, again related to iog um swim Adel, like the wallet I mentioned who knows <laughs> uh min swap so the exchanges um obviously can 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 easily control a lot of a lot of stake um, but actually min swap have a um a very a very good approach and they are um they've just um announced that they're holding a uh, a public vote a community vote because they're 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 community controlled um to choose which pools they will um uh, move their stake to so at the moment they've got min pool which is um which is holding so anytime anybody put, puts money into their smart contracts into min swap smart contracts um that's that ada sitting in those smart contracts can be delegated to a stake pool and so they've delegated to their own pool to create an additional re um, revenue stream for min uh, community and that goes back to reward people providing liquidity on the on the exchange and things like that but then also they're now decided that they again they want to be a good operator they don't, don't want to run too many pools i think i think it's just the one pool that they're running at the moment this one min pool so that their, their their pool is now fully saturated um 28 delegations so that's their smart contracts delegating their their ada holdings to the pool um, and they can, and that, that's saturated at 66 million um ada so they, they don't want to put any more in here because it'll start diminishing the rewards that the delegators have so they'll be earning less as a as a community and so instead of just spinning up an additional pool themselves and moving some the smart contract ada over into that they're actually going to um delegate that to a community pool and so fluid pool have applied to be one of those community pools um that could potentially receive this ada delegation so there's no figures on how much it would be how many um, pools are going to be chosen yet but that's something that's happening um so if you are a min holder then that adds you that means you're part of that community and you can participate in the vote when it comes up so again this is a sort of decentralized um DAO approach to managing um financial assets the financial layer uh, which is really healthy and a much better way of doing things and actually putting the power in the, in the hands of the people who are you know it's like shareholders um in a public company uh, when there's no there's no significant stake tied up in the in the company itself it's all being distributed um to public holders that's the that's a um you know a, a better approach than one single private uh, entity controlling all that money all that wealth um um it's better to have some kind of community decision because at least then it's benefiting the decision being made by multiple heads um and again this is a sort of approach that um that decentralization and and decentralized finance is is taking uh so um <clears throat> that's the pool distribution by pledge and then by number of pools we can see actually there's a <clears throat> the largest is of course single pool operators um and um binance are actually running 91 different stake pools now <laughs> so <laughs> that's one entity running a whole load of pools controlling all the ada within each of those so 91 times 60 63 million is a lot of ada um and in fact yeah that, that'll be the total if you go back to this one and see Binance is uh one billion ada uh in the hands of Binance <clears throat> so when you <clears throat> when you're staking your ada on Binance um or you're holding ada on that exchange in their wallets then they are um using that ada to generate a whole load of of um money pulling money out of the Cardano ecosystem and rewarding just people participating in Binance um which is fine that's what that's how it's designed how it's meant to, to meant to work but uh the fact that um one entity can 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 run 91 pools is a flaw in the system in my mind because there's no reason that they they can't continue improving their user interface attracting all the ADA holders and start taking um, a chunk out of the the the, dis, the distri distribution of the network um and again coinbase is up there as well 68 pools at the moment so when it comes to state pool votes if there's a vote that is one pool one vote then suddenly you've got two private entities having a significant say in 
in the outcome of those votes, um, which is, again is a, uh, and you have to think about uh, the threat vectors, the attack vectors that that um, operations have. And then by delegators, um, you can see that again, 25% of the voting of the delegating community are actually in single pools, which is great, but it'd be really good to get that larger. So Eve, actually, I don't know who these guys are. They probably run a wallet as well. Um, but that's a, a lot of delegators. Um, and of course, you know, it's delegate accounts, so you don't know how much ADA um, each delegate is holding. Well, you do know, but um, from this figure, you don't, from this chart, you don't. Um, so actually, if you looked back at the stake, you could fi find Eve in here and see uh, Eve is controlling half a billion in ADA spread between um between 20 250,000 delegators so there that's an awful lot of people again an awful lot of voting power if it's one person one vote um so you know that that lets you start to think of this is, and this is all really factors that you're you're putting in to uh the governance decisions over how you design networks how you design chains and and financial operating systems and so Voltaire, which is the era we're in with Cardano, um, the, all these are playing into the, the mindsets of people as they're thinking about how we set up the rules and the parameters of operation of our blockchain. Um, and so having charts like this, having people put time and effort into really slick user interfaces for hard data is, is very valuable. Um, you know, critifying data is, is hard work and, uh, um, you know, I really appreciate these guys for putting the time and effort into it. Uh, blockchain Labs, but, uh, Wolfram block, Blockchain Labs. Uh, again, we're in Town Hall this week showing off um, the, the work they're putting into the data analysis um, on Cardano itself, uh, which is great to see. And I've linked to that in previous calls. So you can go back through the Discord and find those links uh, if you're interested. But they're, they're upgrading, improving their dashboard too. Time again, but this one is a the prettiest I've seen, um, I think, so far. So really good job. Thanks, guys. Uh, next up, uh, you know that the pledge in Fluid Pool, which is now sitting at a million ADA, is actually a bond. So I borrowed that ADA um, and I'm paying interest on it to have it for a year. Um, and the guys that put that platform together is, is Optim Finance. Um, They've actually now started doing more than just stake pool operator bonds. They're now doing community bonds as well. So they've actually released their first £250,000 bond, uh, 250000 ADA bond, um, uh, with a higher return of interest. So if you are holding ADA and you're in it for the long haul, um, it's part of your foundation assets and uh, you want to yield even greater rewards than having it in a... Uh, uh, um in a fluid uh, in, in a fully liquid fluid state so you're willing to lock it up rather than have it in fluid pools for example or um, one of the other state pools um you can actually now start to find opportunities for a higher rate of return with, with zero risk still as well i mean it's not zero risk because you're putting it instead of in a native layer one you're actually putting it into a smart contract on the on the blockchain but you are putting it into a blockchain into a smart contract that can't be changed after the fact so i i fully trust this the smart contracts now um having seen um me borrowing a million ada i'm now participating in lending some of my ada back to them um so that other people in the community can use those smart contracts to to raise ada for however they want to be using it so you know for example as a collective iaw could say okay let's take out a uh, a Cardano bond of 250,000 ADA will participate then with that 250,000 ADA in a uh, an ISPO that we all like the look of. So that could be um, um, uh, something like MELD that we've just talked about. Um, we'll put our 250,000 ADA into that MELD um, ISPO. MELD will, instead of giving us ADA rewards, will actually give us um, their MELD token. And so we'll accrue um, a whole load of uh, small cap token uh, and we'll, we believe because we were confident in, the, in that project, in that um, roadmap, and we think that token will be a, a greater value than the, the ADA in that time because ADA is a larger cap coin and it's slow to grow. So, But if we can borrow a whole load of ADA 
to use it to raise a whole load of small cap coat tokens, then um, as a collective, we may be able to earn higher, far higher greater rewards. So you can do, either do that as a collective or you could do it as an individual. So anybody can participate in these bonds um, as, a, as a single individual or as a, as a collective as well. And so these sorts of opportunities, if we all gather together and think it's a good idea, then that sort of thing is now possible. Or if you just like the look of um, a 7% return on your ADA instead of the sort of three and a half, four percent we're getting out of um uh fluid pool. And uh, then this this could be opportunity for you. Now with with this, um a couple of provisos to play into your decision making is that you are taking your ADA out of your self-sovereign wallet and you're putting it into a, a smart contract. So you then no longer have control of that ADA until that smart contract's parameters and, and, and algorithms are played out. Um, so the conditions of the smart contract as you put them in determine what happens exactly. So with these smart contracts, um, typically, like for this one, this first one that they launched, it was a six month um, term. So you're giving up your ADA for six months um, and you're having nothing in your wallet, no, um, nothing over time. It, do it doesn't pair over time, it actually comes up right at the end. So the interest you'll earn off that, um, ADA that you put in only comes back to you at the end of the term. So um, so the, the interest you're earning and the capital you're putting in uh, is fully in the hands of the smart contract. Um, and so it's not like a cash flow at all. It's a, you're handing it all over at once. Then at the end of that six month term, the smart contract will execute, um, liquidate the assets and return them to you. So you'll get your capital back plus that 7% interest on that capital for the term. And it's 7% APY. So, um, and it's a six month term. So you'd actually get three and a half percent of whatever you put into it back. Uh, but that's a, um, you know, uh, uh, prop, that is twice the rate of return than you'd be getting with um, pure native liquid staking on Cardano. The difference is that you can't then spend your ADA. You can't participate in in other um, opportunities. Um, you can't change stake pool operator um, in that meantime. And the more money that goes into opt-in finance, they control where that money is then staked. So um, they can be raising money themselves as a platform, which I'm very happy for them to do because I've put all the work into building this out. But um, um, that's the, you know, the sort of the playoffs that you're making with your funds. Self-sovereignty means you're keeping it, you control, you decide whenever you want to move things around. Um, and on, and I think on Cardano, it's, that's the best self-sovereignty you can have. Like in Ethereum, you're still, still talking about locking up for a certain period of time your ADA, for your Ethereum when you're staking. Um, ADA is, is fully in control of you all the time. You can spend it whenever you want. If you are got an NFT project you want to buy into, you can do that. If you need to exchange it for fiat, you can do that. Whereas uh, once it's in a smart contract, it's then there for six months and there's nothing you can do about it in the meantime. But you're giving up that freedom for a, a, a higher rate of return. Um, so an interesting thing to look into, see if that's, that's something that could fit into your portfolio. Um, certainly when I've, like in my portfolio, I've structured it, I'm going to hold, I've accumulate um, ADA at a certain rate. I'm going to hold that ADA um, in the base, in the foundation of my uh, portfolio. And um, I won't be changing that ADA for other tokens, for smaller cap, I won't be risking it again. And uh, and I want to make sure, I want I do want to earn interest on that where I can. I'm holding it long-term, I'm not going to sell for, you know, I was confident I'm not going to sell any of that ADA for six months. Um, even if the price rises in ADA. Uh, so I, I participated with a, a small portion of my portfolio in return for the higher percentage yield. Um, and so that could be something you want to think of as well. But that was interesting. And and uh, yeah, there are, that one filled up in a matter of hours. <laughs> so so I, I saw it, jumped into it. And by, by the time I was writing a, a post on my Discord, it had already been sucked you know, that he was at 99% or something. So I thought, ah, I'll just mention it in this call. And um, there are new bonds coming out all the time. So you can see, uh, you can see the bonds that are available on the homepage of their um, their app. So they don't have any higher higher rate bonds at the moment. They've just got their 12 month um, SPO bonds. So you can tell it's, if it's an SPO bond because it will be sort of five and a half percent or lower rate. Um, and it's it's got a, an SPO ticker in these square brackets. 
Um, and so if you, you can take that ticker and go and have a nose at the pool in uh, pool.pm, you can see um, <clears throat> it's got some um, larger wallets participating in this wallet already. They've got 24,000 staked Blue Ocean State Pool. You can um, go and see their website. It looks, like, it looks like it's got a problem at the moment, so they can't. But you can, you know, go and do some due diligence on the pool as well. But um, that's a that's an interesting way of looking at uh, which bonds are available, what state pools attached to them. Um, when you see a a bond that is um, uh, not a stake pool bond, but is actually a community bond. I don't know what they're calling them to separate them in terms of names, but it'll just be a, it'll look the same, but it won't have this, this square brackets on and it'll have a higher rate of return. They've had two of them so far, I think. Um, and uh, I, I don't know if they've opened up to anybody to actually issue a bond, um, but you can you can lend your ADA into the bonds at the moment. Um, actually, yeah, issue bond, Let's see if you can do. Yeah, you can now. Uh, you can now do um, smaller length bonds with higher rates of return. So you could actually, we could actually borrow on this platform already. For anything up to ten percent, uh, you can say you're willing to offer. So effectively, if you're issuing a bond, then you are offering, and um, that ten percent on the aid that you're able to grab. So if you've got an opportunity where you think you can make, you know, five hundred thousand out of a three hundred thousand pound loan then you could pound i'm talking about ada um then you could offer you know a 10 percent rate of return if you wanted to and that will be something to be very attractive and get filled very quickly um judging by the, the previous bonds that have gone so the there's certainly been two that i know of that were at the seven percent rate and on this page you can actually i oh know there's been more so there's there's three at this seven percent rate so uh these uh, these three have been issued each for 250,000 ADA. I oh, know this one was 100,000 ADA, so smaller size bond, but offering 7% over, uh, so this one was 7% over 18 epochs, which is three months. This was an 18, this was a six month one. So I got into this one. Um, but yeah, those will be coming up on, on, this, on this site over time and you can get involved. If you so choose, that's an interesting offering in the in the space, and uh, yeah, one that I trust. Go and pull. I take it they can default as well, Jonathan. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, as a as a lender in that position, you can put your ADA in. So, say you put five thousand ADA into it, um, uh, and it's got in a six month term, but actually within that period, the the person who issued the bond. Uh, runs out of money to be able to pay the interest, then um, you can see it's got a it, re it requires a six epoch buffer on each of these bonds. So they have to have put enough interest in to pay for six months worth. Uh, sorry, six epochs worth, which is an epoch is five days. So 30 days of interest are in the bond at any one time. If the value drops below that, then the bond is able to be liquidated. And anybody who is lent into that bond, or any in fact anybody in the world, can go in and liquidate that bond, which means then that the the lender's capital, uh, sorry, the borrower's capital will be re will um, be liquidated, and the the lenders will receive their capital back plus the interest up until that point in time. So if it only runs for half term, then you get your interest for half the term and your capital, um, so you don't lose out. But it just means you haven't had um, your your expected rate of return for the full period. Um, but it's a very robust, secure way of interacting with with um, loans as a lender um, and also as a as a borrower. Because again, this is all smart contract based, um, very lightweight in terms of paperwork and um, due diligence you have to do to get into them. Um, compared to borrowing from a financial institution, uh, but it is you know. A valuable asset that you're borrowing and lending ada can be exchanged for real world fiat on any exchange in the world now pretty much so it's uh it's a very good uh way of actually getting hold of money to into you know operate with
course, you've got to bear in mind the volatility if you are taking it out of the AD ecosystem. But um, if you're staying within that, then yeah, you can you can participate without fear. Really good offerings. Thanks, Jonathan. No problem. Uh, any more questions on that? Just give me a shout. Uh, so another thing I wanted to go talk about, touching on, because we are in Project Catalyst season, is uh, Fund 10 is launched. We're in the proposal stage, so proposals are being issued. I have put in a draft of my proposal. One of my proposals, I'm working on another one with um, Harry again. Harry, how are you? Uh, and uh, once I have that up to a state, I think um, it's readable. I'll, I'll give you guys a link so you can have a little, another look and then uh, see if you want to vote for me when the, when the voting starts. Uh, but if you wanted to participate as a community reviewer, which in case you'll get, you'll be paid for your um, your service as a reviewer of proposals, then uh, that is now open for um, signing up. The, this is the, um, the new Project Catalyst documentation, which is uh, looking very healthy, looking nice and, and well organized. So I'll drop this link into the Discord as well. You can go here. Uh, read all about it, find out if you want to get involved, look at what um, what you'll be paid as a result of interacting with it, um, whether your time is um, worth the efforts needed. Um, and then you can, uh, you can, you know, if, you, if it's worthwhile to you, you can find a way of earning um, from, uh, earning in another way from the Kodani ecosystem. But that's something that's well worth doing. We need good community reviewers. We need people, um, who can be trusted to be honest and open and uh, uh, who have you know, technical expertise is really needed um, in a whole load of different aspects of um, you know any 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 factors that these proposals will touch on so whether that is you know understanding human behavior whether it's software development whether it's um, uh, the way that the legal system works all these are aspects of proposals that we need people, experts in those fields to be able to come in and review and you know, give our proposals the best opportunity. Because really this, you know, this whole um, innovation fund is there to fund uh, the projects that we, the community, think should be built first or at this point in time. And so you can use your ADA to vote for these proposals up or down. Um, and we, but really we want proposals that be put in front of us that are really good quality. And the, the community reviewers have a, a big responsibility on weeding out the poor proposals, on improving the ones that can be improved into a good state, um, in finding good actors who will actually be able to deliver on what they're promising. Um, and so when it comes to our vote, we've actually got a really good selection of strong things that we, we want to see built that we can then vote for. Um, that way, the whole ecosystem raise, raises in utility, and when you've got increased utility, that's when you get increase in um, in value, stored value, and that's when our assets that we are uh, buying with the hope of, you know, seeing them rise in value, that's where we start to see that happen. So, you know, the Optim Finance guys who I've just been talking through, they raised funds through Catalyst. Um, Mel Token raised funds through um, the ISPOs. Um, not Catalyst. I don't think they had anything to the Catalyst, but there, um, uh, there are uh, Catalyst native sections within Catalyst now that large communities like Meld and and uh, like Endmaker's got a category at the moment, a, a challenge at the moment where um, they can set a criteria for the challenge, put money in, put ADA in, and then community proposers can say, we'll, we'll meet this challenge by... Um, delivering on this proposal and then the community votes on whether they think that will be done and, and some catalyst funds will go to that proposal to to build out and so you've got oh, the end maker funds in that case will go to that proposal to build it out and so we start to see um, a healthy ecosystem of builders um, giving us really good utility and helping us raise the value and the wealth um, tied up in this ecosystem which is uh, how you see success long term it's not from raising a whole lot of funds from venture capital, putting it into projects, hoping that they'll grow up and then sucking the value out of them. It's actually in everybody benefiting from growth in the ecosystem as a whole. That's how you get sustainable um, financial growth. Um, and 
and um, the best chance of having that spread out to to lots of uh, people and nations that uh, are struggling in our current financial system, world economic system. So yeah, it's all a small part of it, but it all plays into a bigger picture. So participating by voting, participating by reviewing, participating by um, actually putting in proposals are all things that I think uh, you know I I'd really like to see um, people participate in and earn off the back of it, which is always a good thing. Uh, so when it comes to voting, which is another way of earning from the, the project catalyst, uh, there is a uh, 50, uh, 50 million ADA um, fund this time, and uh, which is about $16 million. Um, a portion of that, I think it's 5% or something, gets paid out to people who vote. So uh, in each round, if you vote, then you can get you get paid for voting. So it's to incentivize people to interact in an intelligent voting system. Um, and so if you go and download the Catalyst voting app, this is uh, the, the Android version, there's a uh, iOS version as well, then you can participate in the voting for Fund 10. Um, you need your wallet, you pair it with the voting app, and then you can actually browse through the proposals on idea scale and cast your votes and if you do that for i think it's even just one proposal then you you can uh, you'll get part of the, the the voter rewards for that fund um so by putting in um half an hour an hour or you know hours if you want to if you're able you can you can earn um I think there have been some like 83 aid or I've from a voting funded in the past. So that's a good way of getting, you know. And I and I still see ADA really at the pound mark as a as a base level. So even though it's 20p at the moment, <laughs> 23p, um, I, I still value it at about a pound in my mind when I'm when I'm thinking about the value of ADA. So you know uh 80 pounds worth of ADA is uh is a good thing to earn for half an hour's work, certainly. And you know, I've got every expectation that it will rise to its previous whole time high, which was um, about two pound sixty, um, and go on above, up and above that still as well um, in the next bull cycle, which I believe will be next year. So, accruing ADA now, where it's easy and cheap, is the best way to to long term boost your ADA as well. Any questions on anything Catalyst? I've got one. So you, so you, so you download it on the from Google Play Store. Uh, yeah, Android. So the voting app. Yeah, the voting apps on Android, and it's a, uh, it's a new app. So if you've got it on there already, then just go to the Play Store to upgrade it to the latest version. Sorry, Paul. Saying. Yeah, no, that's great. Thanks, Jonathan. Cool. Yeah. Um. Then. Uh, we have the not that one is it this one no, can't find it. There, a, there is a uh, there's a, a timeline for project catalyst itself which is um so it launched on may 24th uh the actual open for submission proposal submissions happened on the 22nd um that will end on july 17th so that's when the last proposals uh, will be allowed to be entered then we go into the community review phase for a month um where you as a, a reviewer if you sign up for that we'll have um some training to go through and you can go in then and, and review proposals uh, and then proposers will be able to respond and um, um, and give you answers on your questions um, then uh, the vote will happen um, <clears throat> you know, August 31st voting starts ends uh, a fortnight later the results will, be, results will be cast at the end of September, and then projects will actually start being onboarded and building. They'll receive their funds um, come October. So that's the timeline for the for Fund 10. And, it, you know, dates are always flexible. 
um, when you're dealing with young platforms like this. We, this is the 10th iteration, but um, we've just built out a whole new load of tech stack that is being um, tried out, parts of it being tried out in readiness for, readiness for Fund 11, which is where it will all be it'll all be spun up. So um, there's bound to be some hiccups as we sort of transition into this new tech stack, but uh, it's looking really good. It's looking very exciting. So I'm, I'm very positive about the future of Project Catalyst. They're doing some good work. So that wraps up my Catalyst feel. And uh, uh, as we normally touch on AI as well in recent, recent months, um, I've actually put the effort into putting together a little uh, beta of our own AI. It's not trained on our own data set yet, on my own data set yet. This is just the general chat GPT uh, version 3.5. Um, but I, you know, I, depending on how useful you find it, I might go on and build it out into our own data set so we can actually query things around specific topics that we're interested in, particularly interested in. Um, so it could be trained on all the content from my previous Cardano Q&A sessions. So you can just ask it a question and it will go and have parsed all the content and give you the answer. So if you think of something you've thought about from the past, then you could just bring it to mind very easily. Um, but this is uh, public access, free to use. You can just jump in. I might end up locking it behind um, uh, an NFT token gating. So if you um, hold, uh, so if you're registered on Discord, then you'll be able to, to access it. If you don't, if you're not, you won't be able to. Um, if you hold, um, and not that I've got any NFTs out there, but if you hold maybe some uh, gimbal tokens or some Mac tokens, I'll probably allow you to access it. But for now, it's just free public access. Just see if we can get some interest in it. But this is a full blown implementation of Chat GPT. Um, so you can ask it about anything in the world and it will try and give you an answer. Um, but it's a very useful tool. So if, you, if you've seen me um, talk about it in the past, um, but not actually signed up for an account and started to play with it, then this is a, an open access way just to, to get in there and do it. So someone give me a question to ask our AI overlord. <laughs> I did a, where, I did a will, where will Cardano be in 10 years? Nice. <laughs> Cardano is a blockchain platform that aims to provide a secure and scalable infrastructure. In 10 years, potentially have a significant presence in the blockchain crypto space. We've got that already. Chat GPT, how rude. <laughs> Uh, it's success of it or depends on adoption. It has use cases in finance and healthcare. Very good. It probably won't tell us this. Yeah, it tries to shy away from risky topics like token price. Um, but certainly, uh, Our Prism is the identity project based out of Ethiopia. So it's, it's picking up on the uh, correct answers to stuff. Um, it's very useful. But like as an example, you can get it to do incredibly powerful things for you. So if you are time short, um, you need it to, to respond to uh, a letter or something like that. So I used it last night to respond to a cancel letter related to my property. Um, my uh, license to operate as a as a landlord um i took the content of the of the letter character recognized it into the readable text pasted it into chat gpt asked it a question or asked it to write me a response to the letter um um following these things i wanted to respond with just key points and it wrote me out a nicely worded polite uh but uh, you know showing i had some some legal nous letter in response to the to the cancel letter so very very powerful tool just for helping you with your uh, language construction things like that um i also used it with my brother-in-law to write a uh, a listing for um products that he's uh, looking to launch so it was um so 
and, and again this is i think that was probably the most powerful example so like right um right a shop uh, right a description of the new sculpture i am releasing which is um heavy gauge steel can't spell gauge with a full stone base available three colors finishing say you can write that and say um, then like you can refine it and say make it write a uh, 300 word description of the new sculpture on the scene Drop this thing, and it will then uh, produce some nicely worded sales script for uh, that product. Introducing our stunning new sculpture, a masterpiece of craftsmanship and artistry that will captivate and enhance any space. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it throws in flowery words. Uh, it's got all the right details. It's building out some blurb that will be interesting to somebody looking to, to buy it. Um, a whole off the back of you know, a tiny little succinct terse description. That's the sort of uh, augmentation that you're, if you're not leveraging now in your in your work day job, then you're losing out um, in comparison to, to other people who are leveraging this already. So yeah, do think about how it can be used, where it can make a difference to your, your work life, family life, <laughs> and start to get involved. And yeah, you can just go to pool.fluid7.com slash fluid hyphen pool hyphen AI and make use of that anytime you want rather than signing up for, for a chat GPT account or anything. And uh, we've got a reasonable level of use with that before it times out. But um, yeah, go for it if you fancy it. Let me know how you go. Let the user so I can follow my boss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very useful for... Uh, for winning arguments against the wife or <laughs> or yeah helping your helping your your progress in tricky conversations with family members as well as job resumes or personal statements or anything like that great for my kids all use it now for stuff like that and um it's very powerful so we're approaching are we approaching 11 yet so uh last bit i wanted to touch on was to just to give a bit of uh you know excitement for the future or the, the current movement in cardano um from an investment perspective even though we've had this sec as being mentioned in um as a security in that case against um coinbase and binance by the sec uh a case you know, if, if SEC tried to bring a case against Cardano as a security, it would completely fail because there's, there's, there's I mean, according to the Howey test, which is the best test we have for describing what's a, what's a security, then Cardano is so miles away from failing on any of those points, it's it's, it's untrue. <laughs> um, but if you needed any more, um, you know, confidence in, in how, uh, and I believe, you know, in my opinion, I believe Cardano will do and according to the, the the belief of of lots of others because um there's lots of people that are needed to to cause this kind of movement um this is a, a really good indicator so this is the the um total value locked in defi projects within the cardano space so ada that's being put into um 
uh, decentralized exchanges, into smart contracts, into lending and borrowing platforms, um, all the sorts of utility that I've just been talking about in this call. This is money flowing into those um, those applications and assets, and and that contributes towards the TVL of of the chain of the blockchain. And so you can see back in uh, start of the year, uh, we're about here, and then. Uh, uh, when is that july october so that's probably about uh, february something like that we've seen it spawn uh just an upward trend in total value locked in money flowing into um the chains smart contracts and so on and so forth uh and really you know if anything it's accelerating um, so this is in ada value of course if you're looking at it from the media perspective in in actual dollar value it's a far less impressive um move because of the attacks against uh crypto currencies as a whole um so that was you know the sec announcement about coinbase I, I think um but you know in terms of actual ada being tied up in in uh in applications we're definitely on a massive upturn and and this when compared with you know um the other chains is a is a really significant climb so if, for example, we look at Ethereum in uh, Ethereum value, you can see that they don't, they haven't had that uplift, that increase in in value being locked on chain. In fact, anything that's in decline at the moment, um, so that makes me, uh, you know, confident that Cardano is headed in the right direction. Um, uh, so it's, yeah, it's a native token values we're really looking at here in this comparison. Uh, the Tron network, I believe, is doing quite well. So in in Tron, that is on a on a slight uptrend so at least since um, end of last year. Um, but again, it's not to the same sort of steep curve and 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 sharp rise from from this year that we see on Cardano. Uh, the Binance Smart Chain and Ethereum clone is. Uh, is again anything on on the decline um the big chains are uh, polygon the matic token again it's starting on a slow climb but nothing like cardano again avalanche is the same so you know in terms of the DeFi space cardano um is leading the charge in terms of adoption uh for this year so far so that will result, or hopefully will result, um, in um, the price of ADA increasing as Bitcoin leads the charge with the rise of um, um, the bull market, or the return of the bull market. So, uh, you know, I I don't think we've, us here all invested in ADA, I don't think we've made the wrong decision. I think uh, we've got really shiny, rosy days ahead. And... Uh, and this was a you know a really good indicator on on where things are headed. Um, and uh, I mean in token price as well as you know total value locked, still doing, doing remarkably well. So yeah, do keep an eye on it if um, if you're interested in the native token space within Cardano. Actually, I'm just going to uh, attack tools. And again, we're seeing a you know, recent, very recent. So in the last week, month, we're seeing huge value going into new platforms as they as they launch. So, um, for example, uh, uh, Wi-Fi has popped up onto the top of my radar um, just in this last month. It's uh, increasing value locked on that on that platform. It's a it's a decentralized exchange staking platform liquidity liquidity pool platform um it's jumped 188 percent in 30 days uh which is which is huge rise um and the utility i'll i'll, I'll probably do a bit of a longer session on wi-fi in the future because they've actually got a really interesting offering in that they they do a fully um self-sovereign um liquidity pool yield farming option so and it's the first of its kind as far as i i know so with MinSwap, usually swap, you're participating in yield farming on those. You're actually 
handing your ADA from your wallet into a smart contract, which then, of course, you're not earning any ADA of staking rewards or or anything like that. Um, and and the smart contract is controlling your asset, which is, you know, very good offering in, in comparison to your money in the bank. <laughs> uh, but now the the utility of the Cardano UT, extended UTXO model is lending itself to innovat innovation in in uh, in the way that these platforms can be built. So ViFi, Vi Vi Finance have built out a platform that actually you keep all the tokens, all the liquidity pool tokens that represents your participation in their liquidity pools. You you keep those tokens in your wallet instead of putting them into a smart contract. And yet you will still accrue the um, the the farming yields from their platform. So you're you're retaining uh, self sovereignty over your par your portion of the participation in that pool. So the tokens stay in your wallet, the LP tokens stay in your wallet rather than being tied up in a smart contract. And you can actually trade those tokens between you know peer to peer. So if you if I've got a liquid a yield farming position in a in Vi Finance, um, I'm holding the LP tokens in my wallet, and it's earning me you know um, eighty percent APR, and but actually uh, I found an op another opportunity that's you know, in me a hundred percent. Then I might want to to sell that on instead of liquidating that position, getting my ADA and my Vi Fi back out, and then um, exchanging it for another token and getting back in. Instead, in fact, I can actually just trade with you um, my LP tokens for some LP tokens maybe you have or 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 some ADA that you have. Um, but having to engage in the smart do that in the self-sovereign uh, wallet space as well. So another really impressive innovation um, and exciting for for the future. And you know, by by having that utility, you're actually massively reducing in your your um transaction fees that you have to engage in because to engage in liquidity pools at the moment you have to buy uh ada initially then you have to exchange that ada portion of it for a um, an alternative token that you want to pair with you'll then um pay a transaction fee when you turn those into lp tokens and you pay another transaction you, transaction fees you place those lp tokens into the liquidity pool and then every time you harvest you pay another transaction fee Whereas with this Vi Finance, you actually you're just paying one transaction fee to buy the LP tokens, and then and they sit in your wallet, and and all that interest and in harvesting and everything can happen um, without further transaction fees. A very very clever innovation. Um, and just showing you. And as a result, um, they now have jumped from nowhere thirty days ago to sitting in the. Um, in the top three uh, in total value locked in the Cardano DeFi space. So they've accrued 16 million ADA in 30 days. <laughs> 60 million, sorry, $60 million worth of ADA in, in 30 days. So a remarkable feat. Um, so yeah, I've, I've um, got in late, <laughs> as it, late in, as in that terms, but I've actually bought into some of the Vi Finance tokens as well uh, with a small portion of my... Um, investment portfolio and uh and i'll be participating in their um liquidity pools so um the first thing that alerted me to them was there was twitter space talking about it and then and then i noticed that they have a, a music swap which is not vi finance they actually list the vi finance token and offer a um a liquidity pool that's you know a more standard liquidity pool that i've been familiar with for the past uh, year using um, uh, this Vi Finance was their, their top performing pool at the moment. So, if you're actually just holding ADA and their Vi Finance token, you can put that into a liquidity pool for a, um, an estimated 144% um, APR, which is uh, extremely high, um, extremely good. But that was, you know, that's another indicator I want to point out too is that the the yield from these liquidity pools on Cardano, it's suddenly jumped hugely as well. So for the past year, well, certainly nine months, they've been at the sort of 15, 20, 30% range. And now even the uh, Milk Ada pool, which is MusicSwap's own token, has gone from that 30%, 40% range up to 115. So there's, there's a, a 
far greater yield being returned due to the increased transaction activity on these exchanges on these dexes so you can as a result of the the dollar um valuation going up in the DeFi space people interacting with that space bringing um onboarding money into the Cardano um, blockchain uh, fiat money into the Cardano blockchain and you know probably taking some from other chains we're starting to now see higher rates of return on the uh the uh, the earning abilities within the Cardano blockchain so yeah some some really good opportunities out there now if you are looking to try some um some additional ways of earning rather than just staking um so yeah any questions on any of that we can do brief answers now and if there's something in there that you want to go into further and in, in deeper depth on later sessions then let me know <laughs> otherwise Can you just spell the name because i can't see it. it's too small on my screen the um uh, by oh, so their platform um, and so if you if you buy their token, their Vi Finance token, you can buy it on MusiSwap. You're actually participating in the, the Vi Finance platform because MusiSwap is a DEX aggregator. So you can exchange tokens on, on MusiSwap using other exchanges because of the extended UTXO model that Cardano has. I love it. It's so cool. Um, but uh, yeah, if you want to go direct to Vi Finance and, and, and that's using it for the same, you know, your fees you'll pay on use to offer the same as you'll pay on the finance platform itself um the user face i'm not familiar with so i did on on use what but uh, uh app.vifi.io um is the the Vi finance platform and um if you wanted to buy their token you can go here connect your wallet your ada wallet eternal your oi um choose the vifi token that they they have and then you'll be a holder in, in that token. And so for 10 ADA, you'll get 3.4 by finance. And uh, yeah, not advice, but um, yeah, that token's certainly done well in the past 30 days. And you know, these 10 things can easily snowball. So back to tap tools, you can see that there are several other tokens as well doing extremely well in uh, in this space now. So um AJX we're talking about before a singularity net is slowed down sort of on a on a bubbling along on a horizontal motion over the past month um but some of the, the heavy risers indie token from the indigo protocol which is a collateralized um asset minting platform up 86 percent in the month uh aada lending borrowing platform 10 percent seven days 100 percent in a month uh, Genius Yield token has had a pump this last week, six percent in, in yesterday, one hundred twenty six percent in seven days. Um, so there seems to have sparked some action. They now have staking and um, talking about yield farming on Genius Yield platform coming out soon, and their Dex is going to be launching as well. So their long, slow, methodical approach to development is starting to return yields in their token price still not reached their token launch price so i'm still under the water on genius shield unfortunately but <laughs> you win some you lose some uh, confident long term will be okay uh ntx the other ai token has done better than agix um funnily enough um but that's a smaller cap token so you, you would hope it would uh milk token which is one of my favorites has done really well this recently 180 percent in the month 60 percent in seven days and two percent so it's now you know and this is one, one that i've been doing yield farming with so the token price sort of roughly between three and five um ada for the past year it's now jumped up to 11 uh 12 in the past few days so uh, yeah. yum 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 yeah <laughs> Really good. Yeah. You got some milk. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I enjoy milk. <laughs> so that's a yeah, that's an exciting one to be part of, part of. Uh Endmaker has a really big bit of news this week. So um their price has jumped 80 70 percent, sorry, in after being static for a year. Um they uh, have um partnered with uh, Vodafone Europe. So Vodafone Europe are launching an NFT 
project on the NMaker platform and they tweeted about it and their, their price leapt up. Uh, so, and, and that's the sort of back to the sort of things that you start to see in bull markets is a bit of press by a, um, a highly publicized um, company results in a huge spike in price on some of these small innovative projects that are uh, that are in the space. Um, so, you know, again, it's part of the sort of Muesli swap platform, Milk Token, M Yield, and Snow are all part of their platform, and they've all seen 206% in the in the month, 260% in the month, 180% in the month. So, yeah, these tiny tokens that you throw a punt nap, stick 10 quid in it, you know, last year, and it can be sitting at 10x, um, you know, now, and you know, it could be 100x in a year. Who knows? Um, kind of speculation in this small cap space, but it is exciting, that's for sure. <laughs> of course, there's some in here as well that will just go to zero. So um, projects fail. Um, I summon a little concerned about one of the major developers in that in that project has just left. Um, seems to be all amicable, but you know when you see developers, top developers leaving projects, you you get a bit nervous. Uh, but I, I haven't put much in summon, so I, I, I like investing in that just from a community perspective. They're a DAO platform, so. I really want to see DAOs succeed and turn into and be served with good good tech. But yeah, that's a quick whistle stop tour of the uh, of the small cap native tokens on the Cardano blockchain that um, you may be involved in already because I've talked about them in the past, or you could look at them um, at um, doing some due diligence on uh, as they are certainly so showing signs of moving. Just one last one, Jonathan, from me. Um, any news on A Starter? Uh, a Starter had a Twitter space this week that I didn't manage to get into. Um, they have got, um, uh, what is it they've got launching? Uh, they haven't got a main net launch date yet, uh, which will coincide with the token generation event. Uh, I, I, I'm, there was bound to be some news in that Twitter space, but I, I missed it. I've yet to go back and listen to it, but that might be worth uh, linking to. Uh, um, but there was a bit of news that it's just slipping my mind at the moment. Oh, they've got a new partner pool. That was one thing that came up. So they are still accruing um, good operators into the space. Uh, but they had to just have uh, oh yeah so this was new news Adaverse um, which is a Cardano, Cardano sort of launchpad accelerator incubator um, they've partnered with them which is which is good news um, the DEX version 2 is now done. It was June 29th. Ah, so that's that's brand new news. I hadn't seen that. So uh that's not on mainnet yet though, is it? I know they're still still due for an open beta, but yeah, that looks like um following our last round of beta testing and feedback, they've got version two of it good to go, which is uh which is exciting. So um <clears throat> text dot can't remember the the DA starter dex URL. Is it dex dot a starter? Yeah, that's it. So I don't know if this is version two yet, but oh, it's on a new URL. Doesn't look any different. Oh, this may be a bit different. But yeah, so Redex is around to its second iteration of, um, <clears throat> of open beta. So that's um, good news and hopefully indicative of a, of a launch date that's not too far away now. Again, they'll probably coincide it with a with a, the, the start of a rise in the ADA price because it's better to launch a token in a a climbing market than a, a dropping one which is why they've held off so long i think um 
and I think even just um, this last couple of days, Ada has seen a five percent bump in price. So Ada is starting to to recover from its uh, SEC attack. <laughs> Quick look, look at actually coin market cap. Cardano at one percent um, in the last hour, six percent in the last twenty-four hours. So we're now approaching that thirty cent mark, which is uh, which is good. That'll get us back to to sort of where we've been this year <clears throat> so far. And then um, and onwards and upwards, hopefully. <clears throat> so we reached just over just 30, 30 cents so this was the sec news took us down to 26 cents um, so getting back to 30 will be good and then onwards and upwards <clears throat> good well that was fun session i didn't cover too much i'll drop all those links into the uh into the discord and uh last week's um Recording is up um, because the recording went well. <clears throat> this week seems to have gone the same, so I'll get this one up as well. And uh, you can start picking up um, if you miss out on anything or, or need to recap. But yeah, good to good to see you all again. Thank you for participating, persevering with us. Yeah. It's been an exciting time. <laughs> Thanks, Jonathan. That was a really good session. And I'll catch up. Sorry, I've not made a few of them, so I'll need to kind of catch up on the... Uh on the recordings cool. so yeah and when, when are you doing your presentation to um investment mastery have you got a uh, date yeah no i still haven't <clears throat> haven't still haven't rescheduled the date i need to do that still um yes. thanks for the reminder yeah. um yeah uh yeah i need to get focused on that <laughs> but, uh, yeah it's it's difficult i think actually you need to chase up to jonathan so that he will do it on time. keep hassling me yeah, well. <laughs> yeah. The uh, the state pool is doing doing uh, well at the moment, so we're we're up to uh, two million. We we broke the two million delegation mark. We'll drop down now because um, some aid has been moving moving around. But uh, yeah, we've got this small state pool alliance delegating to the pool at the moment, so uh, mm -hmm. we're we're looking very healthy. Right. Um, we've picked up some um, organic delegators as part of that movement, but uh, it'd be good to to get that keep that going and get that going again with uh, a bit more of an influx. So. Yeah, some IEW and investment monetary talks would be would be good to do. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Good. All right. Great. Have a good week. Safe, safe traveling, Dinesh. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Yeah. Good weekend, Pleasure. everyone. Yeah. Have a great weekend. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. <coughs> Take care. See you all. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.